to all of its guys. My name is Sari and I welcome to this week's review of our USA Mini Most As Patients. The Satema Swahili saying that goes like this. However little effort you invest into something, spontaneously to result into something good. So let's not give up on doing what's fine. But in due time we will reap if we do not tire out. USMLE is a three-step exam. USMLE step one mainly covers basic sciences or preclinical knowledge. And USMLE step two mainly covers clinical knowledge. And finally, USMLE step three, which is the last step in the series of our medical lessons exams. So let's see how we're gonna handle this week's questions. They are five in number as usual. Plug along, follow along, you will love it, and let's get started. So our first review question today is uh, microbiology about coronavirus and uh, the use of uh, hydroxychloroquine. Yeah, yeah. You are working at a rural health post. A young man has attended because of feeling nausea and dizziness. On question, you discover he had been taking hydroxychloroquine to prevent COVID-19. He's usually well and does not take any other medication. He has not had any coronavirus symptoms. What would you do? So there are three options that I want you to choose from. Number one, would you stop this and look for adverse effects? Number two, would you review the dose and continue with the recommended dose? Number three, would you switch to another medication? Give it a thought and uh, feel free to put your answer in the comment section if it's possible. What I want my viewers to understand is that currently there's no known vaccine for coronavirus. Hydroxychloroquine is just used as a supportive treatment. So let's review our answers and see what was the correct answer. I came up with A as my correct answer, whereby I have to stop the medication and look for adverse effects. That's what uh, any healthcare provider would have done. What about B? Reviewing the dose that are continuing with the recommended dose. I wouldn't do that. First of all, the patient was not sick and that uh, he's being affected by the medication. I wouldn't do that. I would be just causing more harm to the patient. What about C? Switching to another medication? No, I wouldn't do that. Why would I be switching to another medication if the patient was not sick? What uh, he was facing were adverse effects of uh, taking hydroxychloroquine. So that wouldn't be a good idea, switching to another medication. So the correct answer here is A. I'll stop the medication and look for adverse effects. Our second review question, trauma. And it goes like this. A 29-year-old female was found lying at the base of a tree, having sustained a witness fall. The patient was on expedition in a remote forest where she was uh, rope climbing. She fell 10 meters uh, landing on her feet, but significantly injured her head on a rock. The patient was found wearing a blood-stained, cracked helmet, but in otherwise fit and healthy. This patient was found to be a moderate traumatic brain injury. A CT scan of the head revealed a left-side subdural hematoma with a midline shift, tranexamic acid, and a hypertonic saline was administered. Why was the hypertonic saline administered? this case. So here are the multiple choices and I'm sure you think critical because they are so challenging and uh, tricky. So A, was it to stop intracranial bleeding? B, was it uh, to reduce the raised intracranial pressure? C, was it to treat high hypercapnia? D, was it for pain management? Which one do you think is the correct answer? Give it a thought and feel free to put your answer in the comment section. I came up with BIMA as my correct answer to reduce raised intracranial pressure. You all know about hypertonic solutions, isotonic solutions, and hypotonic solutions. In this case, uh, hypertonic saline is a high concentrated solution, so it will help in reducing intracranial pressure. What about A? Some of you may think that A is right, but uh, in this case, uh, when uh, someone has an uh, epidural hematoma or bleeding, a uh, bar hole surgery may, may be performed or crinotomy. So a bleeder is identified and uh, the bleeder is arrested. Something may be given for pain. And uh, in this case, tranexamic acid was uh, given to reduce excessive loss of blood. What about uh, hypercapnia? This is simply a raised amount of uh, carbon dioxide in the body. So it may be managed by treating the underlying cause, intubation and uh, artificial breathing. For pain, you just administer analgesics and uh, they will help relieve pain. So the correct answer is B. Our 
Number three, our third review question, oncology. The most common type in children. Is it leukemia? Is it lymphoma? Is it Williams tumor? Or is it neuroblastoma? Give it a thought and feel free to put your answer in the comment section. Number one is the correct answer, leukemia. And note this, all types of leukemias are common in children. Most solid tumor in children is the brain tumor. Most common tumor in infants is neuroblastoma. Most common abdominal uh, tumor is the neuroblastoma too. Lymphoma is a tumor of the lymph system. And uh, there are two common types, Hodgkin's lymphoma and non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. And they are not as uh, common as uh, compared to leukemia. Wilms tumor is rare and affects the kidney. It is also called a nephroblastoma and that affects children ages of 3 to 4 and becomes much less common after the ages of 5. Number 4, our fourth review question, anesthesia. Which one of the following drugs are believed to be effective in treatment of postoperative shivery? A. Is it a central? B. Is it diclofenac sodium? C. Is it betadine? And D. Is it paracetamol? Give it a thought and feel free to put your answer in the comment section. So the correct option is uh, number three, which is spectin. This is the drug indicated for postoperative shiver. Unlike other opioid agents, pethidin, which is also called mepetrin, frequently terminates shivering regardless of the cause. Pethidin has been shown to be one of the most effective treatments to prevent postoperative shivering. So drugs like a diclofenac sodium, is, which is an NSAID, are indicated for pain, inflammation, and uh, swelling. Like for example, in conditions such as rheumatoid arthritis or osteoarthritis. On the inception, on the other hand, is a drug indicated for nausea, vomiting, especially in patients who are, under, who are undergoing chemotherapy, radiotherapy, or after surgery. Paracetamol is an antipyretic uh, analgesic, indicated for pain and fever. And finally, number five, our last review question. All of the following are manifestations of SLE, except is it a lesion resembling DLE? Is it butterfly rash? Is it photosensitivity? Is it a constitutional symptoms? Or oh, sex ratio is nearly equal? Give it a thought and feel free to put your answer in the comment section. Let's get on it. So the correct answer is number five which is a sex ratio is nearly equal. SLE affects women more than it does to men, and uh, young women are the ones who are most affected by SLE. DLE, discord like uh, lesions can occur in SLE. Those people who have SLE, they experience photosensitivity, they have a butterfly rash, erythemia on the cheeks and the nose. Constitutional symptoms occur along with a systemic manifestation. Those are among the 11 criteria for SLE. So the correct answer is number 5. Sex ratio is nearly equal. So thank you for plugging along. I hope you have learned much. And uh, let me meet you here next time when we are looking at other US and the most asked questions. Asante sana. Thank you so much and uh, muchas gracias.